Hello everyone, welcome back to 45 Drives for another Tech Tip video and today, well, we're talking. We're just, we're doing a talking head. We're going to do one of my favorites. We're going to talk ZFS and we're going to talk about ZFS analogies. In particular, we're going to talk about copy on write. We're going to stay a little high level because analogies are fun. We're not going to get in the weeds of it, but we're going to give a great quick analogy that came up when we were talking to someone the other week. Well, we were talking about how snapshots work in ZFS and then copy on write comes up and someone said, what the heck's copy on write? I always just see cow. And I was like, oh, great. So then we gave our analogy we gave. They liked it. So we went, you know what? Why not? Let's shoot a video. I think we might've even done it in the past, but it's always good to talk about it again. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so before we dive into the meat, I've caught you in the intro, but I gotta give you a little context, a little setup of this. Like, so why now? What are we talking about? Why is ZFS copy and write? You've talked about it before. We know about this, it's nothing new. Well, we've, we've been talking around the, around the office and we've got a new initiative of videos and just general marketing and education we wanna do with people because we serve at 45 Drives, people all the way from the home lab learning new things to already advanced ways to the home lab, to the enterprise and everything in between. So. As everyone knows, being everything to everyone is impossible. And when you add in open source software, it makes that almost even harder because, well, what's the right way to do something with your storage architecture? Okay, but what's your storage architecture? That's a broad term. Well, okay, I want to set up backups. I want, I want a storage architecture. I want backups. I want clients. I want everything going to that. I want not just a backup place. I want a backup scheme and somewhere to go. And with open source software and open and, and enterprise level gear like you'd find at Home Lab 45 Pro or at the enterprise line, you can do all those things. And a lot of people who already know how to do this stuff will go, well, it depends. What do you want to try to do? You could do this, you could do this, you could do this. There's a million different ways to skin the cat. By the way, who came up with that saying? That's the horrible worst saying ever. Don't skin a cat. But, but, but I digress. There isn't one correct way to do it for everyone. I'm not going to pretend that that's the right way. That does happen, but it just goes against everything that we believe here, that being free to choose the right solution for you is the right path. The point of what we're trying to do is take all those wonderful things and give you the best way to go through. Sorry, our best way. So. Why I say all this too is because as we went down that road of talking about what we were going to talk about and how we were going to talk about it and what we showed, what we didn't show, we didn't want to make videos 45 minutes long when we got to ZFS snapshots and talk about, oh, snapshots, well, they work because of copy on write. Oh, now I have to explain copy on write when you just lost someone who was there just to find out the best path through the jungle, right? So we're like, great, you know what? We'll have little kickoff points where we we'll be like, go watch this video if you want to learn more of like why snapshots work and stuff like that. Which then um, uh, another conversation came up. I was like, oh, why do they? And we threw out one of our favorite analogies on how copy on write essentially works with CFS and um, relative why that's an improvement over the old streaming styles of file systems. And uh, we said, you know what? Those videos quite aren't ready yet. Why don't we shoot the ZFS copy and write analogy video? So second intro over, let's get into the actual analogy. All right, so now to the fun part. Uh, our, our favorite analogy on how copy on write essentially works. What is it? Not so much, just more how it works and what does that give you and kind of gives you a real life example of, oh, well, I kind of see where it's going. We love analogies here because in, in our opinion, analogies are awesome to everyone. For people who really know it already, a good analogy is like, oh, nice. Yeah, that, that is what, yeah, I like the way you summarized that. And people who don't know it at all go, oh, wow. And it takes a scary concept and makes it a little more um, welcoming. So then they can dive in and learn a lot more. So again, the point of analogy is not to be precise or perfect. It's to welcome new people in to feel comfortable of learning more, or it's just to give a like, oh, yeah, I like the way you sum that up to people who do already know what it is. So let's get into it. Let's talk about copy on write. I felt right to just write that. Copy on write with ZFS. This isn't particular just to ZFS, it's more of the concept of copy on write, but, but what is it? It's a way uh, most modern file systems do their writing. Um, what do you mean do their writing? Well, it's when they commit changes to the file system. Um, solves a bunch of issues like kind of the raid hole problem, um, or just like fundamentally, uh, 
unexpected power losses while committing writes to a file system. Um, and it gives you a bunch of extra features like snapshotting and stuff like that, checksumming, just other ways to work with your data. So let's get into it. Copy on write. What is it? Let's imagine that you have this piece of paper here and you've got these very detailed notes that I have. These aren't squiggles, these are real notes. You have someone working for you that's taking your notes for you. Um, you might be on the road somewhere, I don't know, like you're just, you're busy, right? And you, you call up, you, you call back and you go, hey, dictate this note for me. Let's pretend Siri and voice, voice to text doesn't exist yet. You're still using a good old classic person. So you call up and you say, hey, um, I need you to um, update uh, my uh, itinerary, my notes, my memos, whatever. And someone on the other side of the phone goes, okay, cool, what do you need? And you go, yeah, okay, on line three, when I said all this, 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 we got to get rid of it. I want to change it. I want, that f I want that now to say something else. So traditionally with a streaming file system, uh, the person receiving this phone call and changing your note for you, the streaming file system will go, okay. And they would scratch out that line. They would remove those blocks. They're gone. They're erased. They're moved. Um, and you're talking and you say your new line and they write that in. Boom, save it. You put the phone down, it's saved. Done. You've committed a write. That's the way it worked on the older file systems or on the streaming file system, if you were like an XFS or something. Um, but you can probably see a problem with that. What happens when you go, okay, I need you to make a change to line three and they go, okay, and they scratch line three out and then you lose connection. And they don't have that committed anymore and you call back and it's, and it's gone, the idea is gone. But you don't remember what used to be there before. Now you got a big hole in your file system. You could end up with a corrupt file system, lost data, anything like that. That is the problem with unexpected power losses on streaming file systems. Now there's tools to work around that don't, don't I, I, it's not as dangerously scary as I kind of presented it right there, but that is a, a fundamental problem with them. Um, that then shows itself in the raid hole problem you might hear with things like that, that same idea. I need to erase something to write something new in I di it died on me before I was able to commit everything back. Okay, whatever. How does copy on write do this? Well, let's imagine that same situation. You call the person, you say, okay, I wanna change line three again. And instead of scratching out line three, they just write a new line three down in the next available spot. They go, okay, cool. And commit their changes, blah, blah, blah. Put it in there. And then boom, click, you save. And what they do is they just kind of dereference the old line and say, line three is down here now. And everything ticks along just fine. That's copy on write. Awesome. What does that save? Imagine that same process there when the phone died halfway through. Well, um, phone dies halfway through. That's fine. Scratch the new line I was running and just kind of recover the old piece of data that I just left in place there. Boom, you're, you're, you're safe from power loss that way. Uh, even better, you do something like ZFS where you have an intent log and then you can just replay what the intent, what the intended rights were and then it just fixes itself uh, and you've got something that's crash consistent. Awesome. Um, how do you get snapshots out of that? Well, remember how I said where the new line comes in and then they can just erase the old one now that they've committed the new one? Ah, but if you, if you took a snapshot, what if you kept the old data? You've, of course, it'll take some room if it's something new, but what if I keep the old data? Ooh, now I have a point in time reference to what the data used to be. And that's what snapshots are. In that same analogy of where I'm calling my, uh, my, my helper to write down my new notes on it, maybe they just know I'm gonna do this and probably wanna know what I had there before, so they don't actually erase it. They just go Tuesday at 10 p.m. And then in three days when I go, what did I have there before then? Oh, I shouldn't have changed that. They go, oh yeah, no worries. Uh, you had this written and maybe you revert it. Maybe you write it out somewhere else, but I digress. I've said that twice already. That's my new favorite saying in videos. That's essentially the, our high level analogy on how copy on write works. It's the don't erase what's in place, write it somewhere new and just point it back. Okay. So with that, I hope that you've got a kind of a higher level understanding of uh, comfortability of what copy on write is so as you learn more about this and see this in other videos that uh, whether it's here or anywhere you feel comfortable with it and for those who uh, know it already I hope, hope you enjoyed the analogy feel free to use it if you agree with it and if you don't let me know what I should have done to improve it um, 
And with that said, stay tuned. Like I said, this general series of, uh, sorry, this, not general series, these best practices of storage architecture and the, the ways you can do it and all the ways to beat the common perils of, of losing data. Stay tuned for that because we're really excited to show you. And um, expect a little more of these little offshoot ones where I get really friggin' excited talking about analogies, which are truly my favorite thing. Um, I've got more, ZFS rights, got all kinds of them. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Catch you next time.